got another sewing vlog for you guys today. Um, I have no idea if this is actually going to work out, the thing I have in mind, but we're going to give it a go. I really fancied making a dress cut on the bias. I have my friend's wedding at the end of the week and I'm kind of in my head thinking that I can get it done before then. Um, and I could possibly wear it as a wedding guest outfit. <laughs> but that could just be my delusional self, thinking that I can make a dress in a week now. Less than a week actually, in a few days. And a bias dress has to also sit for a few days to sort of relax into the bias. So I better get started. Last night I did some draping on the mannequin, which is what's next to me here. And so I'll show you what I've done and then I need to sort of transfer it onto paper and make it into a pattern and then twirl it and hopefully that will be done today and then tomorrow if I like the dress I can make it and then that should give me a few days for the dress to settle and then I can hem it just before the wedding <laughs> so this is where we're at with the dress it's kind of hard to show you because some bits I didn't trim off and some bits I've just kept as half. So we've got a cowl neckline and then I've done a few little ruching details at the front and then it goes into this sort of deep V shape cut for the dress and then I'm just keeping the skirt really plain which is very unlike me <laughs> but I thought seeing as there's quite a bit going on up here and I might add some little sleeves that I want that bit to be kind of plain. And then at the back I kind of mirrored that, but I quite like the idea of having a bit of ruching at the lower back and then also going into that V at the back because that's quite flattering. I'm probably gonna not do a facing and I'm probably gonna do a bias trim around the neckline and then I won't have to line like half line things. I have two different fabric options. The first is they're both crepes polyester crepes but this is the first one just a pretty just a very pretty pink and then the other is this amazing floral pink and blue which I am leaning towards but I could probably make both because I don't think I think once I've made the pattern it won't take too long to make as a dress so let's get on and get this marked out onto paper front and back bodice pieces cut out in my twirling fabric. This is what the front looks like. It's always a very funny looking shape when you've got a cowl neckline. <laughs> They're both cut on the bias so this is a total experiment and now I've got to try and figure out how to recreate those side pleats that I had. So I did notch them so we're gonna have a go at matching them up and I'm just going to clip them into place before I go and sew them. This fabric suddenly looks very much like wafer thin ham. <laughs> it looks like I'm sewing ham. That's looking promising. Let's try the front ones and I kind of want to make sure that it's going to match on the side seam. I'm going to go and stitch those into place and then come back. I've stitched the side seams and the shoulders 
and I'm going to try it on and see if it's going to be a good thing or a bad thing. So let's see. This is looking good, but the only thing is I think I need to angle my pleats better at the front. It worked really well at the back. But not so well. That side's okay. This side's not. You see how it's got that like, just comes out and then in. Because this whole bodice section is a lot higher up than I thought it was going to be. I thought this was going to be about down here, but it might be okay because it might sit over my hips, but my hips start here. So we'll see. I've got the skirt piece cut out and I just stitched it down the front, centre front. So now I'm going to attach that to the front bodice and see how that works. Okay, I actually think it's looking quite cute. I'm going to insert a little clip here of me showing it from the front. I've got jeans on so it's not really flowing great. The other issue I've noticed is there's quite a lot of looseness up here so I might just lower that and hopefully that it gets rid of that. <laughs> yeah. Luckily that has sorted the back issue out so that's looking good. I guess I ought to make a skirt twirl on the back as well so let's do that now. Also, another question is, do I want to add a sleeve or not? Because I actually think it looks quite smart without. But I don't know if that's just because I'm wearing a t-shirt and it's got a sleeve and it doesn't look too bad. Okay, let's try the song. It actually looks how I wanted it to look. <laughs> Can't quite believe it. Very happy with that. I'm going to change the shape of the armhole up here. I also think the length is perfect. I'm still concerned that when I wear it, this back is going to gape loads, but I'm just going to have to, I think, interface the seam allowance. I could always cowl the back. You know, I don't think it needs a cowl front and back, do you know what I mean? And then also when you're wearing like a, a jumper, like this one for example, you don't want it to look like a humpback. A humpback? Hunchback. <laughs> we definitely don't want to look like a humpback whale. So now I'm going to make the changes to the pattern. I might quickly just try it on without my t-shirt underneath. That's what it's looking like without my jeans and t-shirt underneath. The only issue I'm having with this fabric is that it's completely static to my body. So I'm not sure if this one's also going to do the same. I might just hold it up against my body. See what it does. But then again I could also wear a slip dress underneath. That may help um, yeah, I'll probably have to wear a slip dress underneath anyway. This fabric seems to be behaving against my body. I think this is probably the better option than the pink because I know that this is a really good quality fabric. And it's a bit fun and bold and I know that that's what the bride likes. So let's cut it out in this fabric. I had to turn the big lights on because it's suddenly got very dark outside. I think it's going to rain. But I am just pinning this fabric very carefully and I'm going to, it's nearly lunchtime and I'm about to see my godmother, which would be lovely, um, so I'll have a few hours away from this, but I thought it would be good to get this pinned and cut out and I can drape it on the bodice so that I can, it can have that time to, to settle down a bit in the fabric before I stitch it and I'll probably also go around all the way around or wherever the seams are and do some stay stitches just within the seam allowance because apparently that's also a good thing to do with bias when you're working on the bias. I forgot how much I love this fabric. It's such a gorgeous print. This is actually dead stock fabric from a brand I worked with over the summer when I interned 
at uni and I loved everything they produced and then I saw this come in at the new craft house fabric and I was like um yes I'm going to have that <laughs> and then I'm gonna this is really useful this little um pattern master for finding the true bias of something To here. This will also hopefully help me find the pleats a bit better and let it sit where the pleats are meant to go. cut all the dress pieces out and now I'm just cutting some bias trim. It's been such a long time since I've actually made bias trim and I always end up sewing the first one the wrong way round when I'm joining them all up together. So let's try and not do that today. <laughs> yeah, I did it. <laughs> Do it the right way. I'm just going to sit and stitch all of these together and then trim off the ends. So I've cut all of the fabric for the dress now and it's just sat pinned on the mannequin. And I actually just cut some little strips of interfacing and I think I'm going to interface certain points on the garment that I think need it, so maybe like this part here, the V, the front with the skirt. I think the side seams are probably going to be okay. I might do the side that's going to have a zip in it. That's probably a good idea. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing now. I also read a tip that said when you're ironing things on the bias, to just press it and lift the iron up rather than, you know, squish it along like that. Oh my god, this looks so neat. Oh. most of the dress pieces together now and uh, this is the front skirt piece and I'm actually gonna leave a one centimeter seam allowance at the top because that might make it easier to um, put the V front bit in but we shall see front skirt piece together and I reckon that will help at the top I've left one centimetre unsewn and hopefully it will help pivot the angle pivot because I've got to sew it onto that point <laughs> fun fun <laughs> really nice 
nice sharp point on that front bit. I've got the front piece sewn together and the back piece. So now I'm going to attach them at the shoulder and one of the sides and keep the left side open to add the zip. I'm going to put the zip in now and I saw a little trick someone did for putting in a zip which looked very handy. So I'm going to follow that. So they stitched up the side to start with, with a very long stitch, just like a basting stitch, I guess that's called, just so that they'd matched up all of the seams and then they opened up the seam and they put the zip on top and then they tack the zip on, undo that front seam and then you've got the zip in place where you need it to be. So once you've sewn that, just turn it through and check that everything is lining up nicely. Which it looks like it is. And then we're going to open that seam. And you just want to get your invisible zip and place it down on top of the seam allowance and you can start pinning it into place and then we're going to tack it into place with some hand stitching which I don't usually do but this fabric is very fiddly <laughs> and I don't want to pull it in any weird direction so I'm just making sure that zip is sitting in the middle of the seam allowance Now I'm just going to hand tack that zip into place on each side. I've tacked the zip in, so now I'm going to turn the dress the right way around and I'm going to undo those stay stitches. I'm going to change to a concealed zip foot. That is the neatest zip I have ever done. That was the easiest way to put a zip in. I don't know why I haven't done that before. Look, it's so, it's so invisible. That's a normal seam. And that's got a zip in it. My issue now is going to be making sure there's no puckers at the end of the zip. That's always where I fall short as well. I'm going to stop sewing for today so I'm going to put this dress on the mannequin so it can relax into its form and yeah carry on with it tomorrow. It'll be interesting to see what happens to the dress, how it changes when I leave it for a few days but I am so happy! I can't believe I've managed to get to this stage in one day as well like this was not a thing this morning. Okay, we're going to finish the dress today. It's had two days of hanging, hanging out on the mannequin, two to three days. Um, in the meantime, I've started a, a new quilt project and now all I want to do is quilt. I've got the quilt bug again. Um, so, <laughs> that was very silly of me. Um, that will be the next video, probably. I'll give you a sneak peek. I found a load of vintage Laura Ashley scrap fabrics. Um, like, oh, hello. Hello. Oh my gosh, she scared me so much. My dad just gave me a mini heart attack. Did not sound like him at all. So yes, I found a big box of remnants of Laura Ashley fabric, and I wanted to make a quilt out of them. So I've just started a very simple quilt, um, which is very satisfying because usually I choose a quilt that's going to take me forever, like my hand quilting project still ongoing, still only halfway done, <laughs> if that. So this time I just went for squares and it's going to be, uh, I think it's an Irish diamond or something like that, an Irish cross block pattern. Basically just got squares, big squares and then little squares with nine blocks within them. So it's a really easy construction. But this has to be put aside for a few days now because I have 
a dress to finish and a wedding to go to. So I'm just going to clear out this quilting bomb site and then let's get on and draft a sleeve pattern for the dress. So I'm just going to draft half of the sleeve and then I can copy that out. So it's going to need to be gathered at the shoulder seam and then gathered all the way along the top of the sleeve. So I'm just going to grab my tape measure and I'm going to measure around the top of my arm. So it's about 28 centimetres. And then a half of that, that's 14. And then our times 14 by 3. And that should be a good amount of volume. It might be too much volume, let's see. Yeah, I think that's way too big. Okay, so I'm going to do about there, I reckon. I find sleeves are much better if you just have a go and try making one and then go from there with the changes. This is going to be the cutest little tiny sleeve. <laughs> There we go, that's the sleeve pattern I've got going. Now I need to go and add the seam allowance, trace this off, and let's give it a go. We have the sleeve sewn together. This is obviously the twirl, <laughs> not the final fabric I'm using. Um, so I'm just going to start by gathering up this top bit. So I'm just pulling two threads from the top and manipulating that along into this channel seam. I have my elastic on a big roll so I, I don't need to pin the other end to stop it from going inside and start threading it through. We have a little baby sleeve just need to put it on my arm to see how much elastic it would need and then we can close the elastic mm, that is so cute okay I'm going to stitch up that elastic that seems to be a good length and then we can attach it to the original twirl we made and see how it looks sleeve is in I've got my poodle she's having a cuddle mm. We sometimes call Floria sleeve poodle because apparently they used to use poodles to like warm your arms. And I can see why because you're so cozy, aren't you? Got the sleeve in, the twirl. So let's just try this on. I think that looks pretty good. Woohoo! It's not very often that I get it right the first time with a sleeve. Let's go make it in the final fabric. This final fabric is a little bit thinner than this one, only by a tiny bit. So I'm definitely going to interface along this top part here in the seam allowance. And I don't think, I don't think I'll need to, no, I won't interface along here. I think I'll leave that. inside the sleeves. I'm just gonna check it's looking good. I think those are the perfect little sleeves to go with this dress. Ooh, I'm very happy. And also another benefit, I won't get sunburnt shoulders. <laughs> I'm gonna go and finish the seams inside and then we need to add some bias trim to the neckline all the way around and then we just need to hem. 
I made a load of bias trim the other day with scraps from the fabric so I am just going to start pinning that on the neckline. I don't think I'm going to bother pinning it because I think I can just move it as I go round. I'm going to try and even out this hem now now that it's had time to sit and I'm going to find the shortest bit first which I think is here and I'm just going to measure from the floor okay and it's hitting about nine length where it needs to be so now I'm just gonna go and do a little baby hem double roll baby hem all the way around the skirt I've just finished hemming the dress so now it is done this is how it's turned out I'm very happy with it it's so comfortable I think the little sleeves turned out really well so yeah what do you guys think I think I'm going to be making a lot more bias dresses from now on. And look how it moves. I need to decide which accessories to wear with it now to the wedding. And I should probably also try it on with a slip underneath. So yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I will add some little video clips of the dress on when I wear it on Saturday for the wedding. And yeah, let me know what you guys think of the dress. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.